Here it is. This is the last installment of the Wagoneer Project, but this time I got my nephews to help me jazz up that jingle. I started the work, it took longer than I'd expect. It's called the Wagoneer Story Project. Part four of this three part series. So, the motor's running smooth. We got the exterior looking real nice and shiny. And all we gotta do is fix up the interior and we're finally finished with this thing. If you've looked at many Wagoneers or any 30 year old car in general, you know that time has a way of wearing down the interior of a vehicle. The headliner's sagging, the carpet's all dry rotted, the interior door panels are moldy and banged up and the dashboard's cracking. And all of that was going on with this Wagoneer. I knew that everything had to be replaced. After I got the seats out, Henry and I took some time tearing out all of the interior. The carpet, the seat belts, all the hardware, we took everything out. So we stripped it down all the way to the bare metal, and then it was time to find all the replacement pieces. I went to the only source that pretty much has everything, teamgrandwagoneer.com. Now I've talked about getting stuff from there before, but I think it would be a little disingenuous not to tell the whole story. Their customer service is god awful. I mean, terrible. Early on in the process, I placed a $5,000 order for the fuel injection parts and several other engine parts. Right as I hit purchase, it kind of dawned on me that the $2,000 thing that I ordered a couple weeks ago still wasn't there. So I started getting paranoid and went on their Facebook page and started looking at all the reviews. They're awful. They're terrible. The time it takes to actually receive your goods is way longer than it should be. And for a minute there, I really thought that I had been completely ripped off and this was a fake company. I mean, I, I was really concerned. So I started calling about four times a day and literally it took me two weeks to finally get a person on the phone and when I did they were very friendly and by then the first order had come in and so I realized this is you know this is a real company it's not a ripoff but it would be nice to have a source that's a little more timely and reliable now I will say this every single thing that I ordered from them eventually came in well, I have faith in them, but you just can't get in a hurry when you're ordering from them because it will take a long time. All right, sorry Team Grand Wagoneer, but that's just the truth. Okay, so here's everything I bought from them. The complete carpet set, headliner material, clips for the doors, pins, fasteners, the new turn signal, kickboards, a new pedal cover. Every surface in the interior was replaced. I found a dash pad off of eBay. It took me about four months to find that. I also found new interior door panels on eBay in the same way. I just kept checking every day for a few parts that I really needed, and eventually some decently used pieces came available, and so I got them. So we finally had all the parts and pieces together, and we were ready for that final push to get it done. Unfortunately, a little something called life got in the way. Our son Ryan was born, and that by itself was a handful. And then we bought a corn vending machine and started a corn business. So for you guys that don't live in a rural area, it's a unit that holds 15,000 pounds of corn. So folks come and put money in the machine and it spits out anywhere from five to 55 gallons of corn, depending on how much they paid, which they go and use to feed their deer or cattle or hogs. I don't know, it seemed like a great idea at the time. I was asked to shoot some promotions for the Louisiana River Builds TV show and that was about to air. We had the island and that was starting to take up pretty much all my free time. And duck season was quickly approaching and I really wanted to spend a lot of time with Louisiana wetlands and sort of developing that channel. So I knew it was gonna be a really long time before I got to start working on the Jeep again. Now, restoring the Jeep was part of the fun, but the whole point of this was having a Wagoneer that I could use and enjoy. And so it was tough knowing that it was gonna be six months to a year before I really had time to finish this Jeep. 
and then a miracle happened. So it turns out that one of Richard's 700 cousins actually owns a body shop and happens to be one of the most wholesome, honest, and nicest dudes probably I've ever met. And he said he was willing to work on the interior for me. So he got to it and I'll tell you, it was such a relief knowing that I had a professional there helping me get this thing done. So he started the work. If you've been in a Wagoneer, you know they're loud. So we decided to get Dynamat and cover all the interior metal surfaces with this stuff. It's kind of like a sticky tar paper with a foil backing and you just stick it all over the metal surfaces. It turns the metal from sounding like a hollow drum to basically just kind of knocking on a solid brick. It made a huge difference with the noise. There's a big piece of cardboard that goes underneath the carpet in the back of the Jeep and it was all moldy and nasty. And Marshall being Marshall, he completely remade that piece out of plywood. Once we got that down, we put in the carpet. The headliner had a sag in it, and so Marshall got the headliner damp and rolled it up into a barrel and left it for about a week. And when he pulled it out of the barrel, the bend was out of the headliner, and he put some Velcro on the back side of the headliner so that it would stick to the roof of the car. He covered the old headliner with the new material that we bought from Team Grand Wagoneer and got the headliner installed. He snapped in the new interior door panels, put in the new carpet, installed the seat belts, we put in the new sound system, and Marshall went around the car fixing all the fuses, the light bulbs that had burned out, and a lot of the small electrical work that needed some attention. He spent a ton of time on that, and I'll be forever grateful. Without him, this whole Jeep would still be stripped down to the bare metal inside. He's the only reason I'm able to show it to you and enjoy it with my family. So Marshall, thank you. You, my friend, are the man. So now there's only one thing left to do. Let's take it for a spin.